Thank you. Good morning. 1,610 trillion. Inside DTCC, we actually say 1.6 quadrillion. But the AWS team told me that's not a real number. So who are we and why do we use such numbers? DTCC was created by the financial markets to solve a paper problem. 50 years ago, if you bought shares in a public company, usually through a stock exchange, you sent a check and you received a paper certificate of your stock shares. So in 1973, DTC was formed by the financial industry to put old stock certificates in a vault and create a computerized central ledger. Today, we clear virtually all trades in US stock and bond markets. About 90 million trade sides a day from over 50 different markets. We also have expanded our financial offerings to other financial products, including global derivative markets. So that 1.6 quadrillion number is the total value of transactions we process annually. DTCC is the Depository Trust and Clearing Corp. So trust is our key middle name. And that is the key word as we are the trusted infrastructure for the financial industry. We are regulated by almost every global financial market in every global market we operate, by every financial industry regulator in every global market where we operate. They supervise our activities from business models to systems resiliency. And they're very interested in our infrastructure. And our infrastructure now includes AWS Cloud. So I'd like to take you on our journey of cloud enlightenment how we moved from a very controls-oriented mainframe technology culture focused on security, resiliency, and privacy. We even have a COBOL fan club. Uh, and we moved ourselves to the cloud. It all started with an opportunity. Let's go back to 2012. We are emerging from the Great Recession caused by the credit crisis of 2008. The financial industry is focused on cost reduction, and the regulators are focused on creating laws to address the root causes of the credit crisis. In particular, they're focused on bringing transparency to trading, in particular, the more complex financial transactions called derivatives. This was different than anything DTCC had looked at before. We were asked to create a trade warehouse of derivatives transactions to help the industry meet a regulatory agency, the CFTC's requirements. It had to be free. It had to provide pricing data. It had to be real-time. It had to be public, meaning no logins, no capture of, of user details. DTCC runs a private network connected to the financial industry with our own data centers. We have no model for public access. Did I mention we're highly regulated? So the build estimate for internal infrastructure was over $4 million for a free service. Our business was not happy. Our hardware vendors were very excited. A couple of our more innovative team members decided to try out a cloud model literally over a weekend in early March 2012. And by Monday, they demonstrated a simple working prototype on AWS by taking snapshots of ticker data, dropping it into S3, and making it available as an RSS feed. It was public data, so our security and compliance teams got quickly on board. We were actually in production in December of 2012. The original estimate internally was $4 million for infrastructure. The first year, we spent less than 1% of that on AWS costs. Five years later, we have three times the daily volume, almost 20 times the data stored, and our costs are one-third of the first year. And there's no hardware refresh cycle. We actually sent a team to AWS reInvent in Las Vegas in 2012 to get educated, and they came back super energized, looking for more opportunities to leverage the cloud. So we partnered with AWS as a first opportunity to make their Glacier service compliant with a regulatory rule that requires immutable storage. And we immediately realized benefits. We were able to move a tape archive to Glacier and reduce our costs by 90%. We reduced our costs from $2.5 million of maintaining tapes and tape silos to 250,000 per year. We don't have infrastructure refresh needs. We meet regulatory compliance for archiving our data. And we enhanced our data searchability over being able to search through tapes. So now we're moving data into the cloud. But can we actually do something with that data? Our regulators and the financial industry are constantly asking us 
to gain better insight into that data. We collect transactional data from all the different markets. Can we actually do something with that? So working with AWS, we've been building out a cloud data analytics platform, and we've also been building internal data science skills. We started with a risk data platform, which does an analytic process once a month on data collected all month long. So an immediate benefit was paying only for resources we needed once a month at the end of that month. Next, we provided our clients with a risk calculator so they can run their own risk scenarios. And we're now moving our data into a warehouse on AWS using Snowball, and we're going to implement the data lake to create data marts on demand using EMR, Presto, Redshift, and Postgres. This is our uh, a picture of our new user experience. We've given this client calculator out to our, our clients. Uh, for those of you who know DTCC uh, for a long time, you'll probably be most impressed that we've left our long love affair with 3270 green screens. Uh, this is an, a number of the AWS services that we're using to support what, what I've just shown you. Uh, and literally, this, the number of AWS services that we're taking in and absorbing into the culture is changing on a monthly basis. So our, our story so far is this progression of maturity on data. In 2016, the financial industry challenged DTCC to help reduce complexity in processing exceptions. We process over 100 million transactions a day, so even a small percentage of exceptions literally means 10,000 trades must be manually corrected to make sure they can be processed and settled correctly. So we worked with our clients. We built a common workflow for processing exceptions, and we standardized the data model with the expectation in that in the future, we'll be able to use machine learning principles to be able to identify exceptions in advance and find resolutions. The business goal was a working pilot within a year. We decided to go all in on AWS using serverless and platform as a service, Lambda, Aurora. So for transaction processing, we had many engineering challenges. The right balance of performance and capacity versus costs, resiliency, coordinating between multiple data centers in different regions of the US with multiple AWS regions. We needed to integrate the client experience, which was built by a third party, pushing the envelope on all angles for DTCC. Large projects in the financial industry normally take years, and then adding the client migration to those and the client adoption and moving their change, changing their processes and systems adds additional years. With AWS, we deployed the system to pilot production in nine months. The new system is a single pane of glass to manage exception processing. We've already built significantly, significant industry momentum. I want to mention resiliency and emphasize how important it is for DTCC. The financial markets expect DTCC to be there without fail every single day. Our regulations re have requirements for out-of-region recovery, minimal distance to another region, recovery time objectives, recovery point objectives, testing schedules. Our regulators visit our facilities and they review our disaster recovery tests. AWS provides multiple services and multiple options for multi-region resiliency. They are well beyond what we could do on-prem, but they're very different from on-prem. So it's our responsibility to design and engineer those services to support those requirements. We spend a lot of time engineering resilience model and we're constantly conducting recovery tests on different disaster scenarios. Our regulators require regular re-verification of our DR capabilities. We're good at shutting down a DTC's data center to prove a test. Uh, it's a little bit of creative science to simulate that in AWS. So we are working closely with AWS on what that can look like. So that's our journey to date, starting with an opportunity to see the cost and benefit scales of the cloud, moving to the Lego toolbox of AWS data capabilities, to build our own data science, uh, advance our own data science capabilities, and moving to the first implementation of AWS Cloud, of transaction processing in AWS Cloud. So what's next? We're very focused on resiliency and improving automation. We've created a chaos team based on best practices adopted by Netflix and others. We're partnering with AWS on the best models that will make our regulators comfortable with continuing to progress in the cloud and moving eventually along a roadmap to take mainframe applications and critical transaction processing applications and move them to AWS. Oh yeah, and we're also building our first blockchain system with the industry on AWS. So why are we here? 
and what is it, why is it we're telling you this story without any fancy videos? We believe that communities are stronger than individuals, and the more enterprises and the more of you that move to AWS, the stronger AWS will become and the more resilient that cloud will become, which is going to be a win for all of us. Thank you very much.